Welcome to the Nuclear Snail channel. This is what I'm currently working on. An armor made out of thick belts. And those are some belts, or rather just one belt, from some sort of an agricultural machine. Got this belt from my friends. They're clearing out a, uh, an old farmhouse right now. So, this came about. <laughs> One of the many finds. And um, this is a pretty cool rubberized material, like it's rubberized on the back. And here is like thick, thick sort of cotton linen. I don't even know what. Like it's really sturdy. It's really tough to cut through this. So yeah, as I said, this is a work in progress. Some of you might have seen uh, some pictures of it I posted a while ago where it still had the shoulder straps of the same belt. So it would look something like this, where this belt would just continue here and go all the way around and it all would be like a solid construction. But that had some mobility issues, so I removed those and replace those with these adjustable belts from a climbing harness as well as uh, this back part right here also from the same kind of harness a short note here if you come across climbing harness they're great for looks but unless you wanna get yourself killed do not use them for actual climbing so these are climbing harness uh, parts from a harness that was uh, to taken out of commission. It's no longer good for actual climbing, but it's still good for looking cool. So, um, there are multiple things about this that I would like to address that I think might be of some help. Now, first of all, as I've said, mobility. As you can see here, this is pretty much just a chest plate with an angle like this, which allows me to just, you know, really move my arm around. Sure, I could have had a solid plate in the middle here, it wouldn't hinder me that much, but with this I just have the fullest range of motion up here in the shoulders possible. Right? So this is great. Obviously I will also have other pieces on the shoulders and the arms and uh, up here I will show it to you in a sec what I'm planning for that, but as far as mobility goes, this is awesome. Like. The only thing I really can't do that well is like a really curl up in a ball like this because at some point if I do, this starts to poke into my neck, which is kind of suboptimal. So I might also clip it up here to make this, you know, not pointy. Um, especially considering this will rarely be seen as I will be wearing it in combination with something. But I mean, a, a look like this, where it's not just the shoulders always emphasized, you know, a lot of my builds have this manly V shape that I've talked about in one video or another. Um, I might also sometimes go for like, you know, more torso focused build like this. Because hey, why not? But as I've said, I'm actually gonna get like a poncho jacket kind of thing. I'll show it to you in a sec. So, as far as mobility goes, this is great. It also doesn't weigh a lot. Um, and here, I have uh, not only those quick release buckles, so I can just buckle and unbuckle it as I like. Uh, this might actually be just, you know, I could have just skipped those and just made adjustable belts here. I might uh, cycle those out of this so uh, they don't go to waste because they are pretty fancy and a lot of times it will be covered up by... Well, I, I keep mentioning it for the third time now, let me just show it to you. This is work in progress, obviously, but um, this is what I'm planning for this. So as you see, a lot of this is gonna be covered up. Maybe by this, I mean certainly by this, but maybe also by other options. So a lot of times this area will not be visible, it will be covered by something else. But what I really wanted these for is adjustability here. I can change how far this goes. But again, I don't need the buckles for this, I just need something that allows me to adjust so that I can wear this either over a t-shirt or over a really thick winter jacket. 
right? This is the adjustability on the shoulders and I also have some adjustability down here on the belt, right? I can do some adjustments here. And the great thing about this, as it is right now, to make this come off, I just release this. This is like super duper easy to take off and on. I don't need to poke my head through some tight hole. I don't need to like zip and unzip a hundred belts. I just put this on, take this over here, click it closed, pretty much done. Unfortunately, I still have to, you know, wiggle around a bit, adjust it, but here it is. Right? Uh, let me actually show you the construction, uh, the, uh, not the construction, but, well, the visual construction of how this goes. So, first of all, we have one, two, three belts right here, which kind of follows the anatomy of the abs, if you will. Uh, a segmented plate in an area of the body that is known to be segmented, so the abs area. It doesn't replicate it exactly, but it still kind of echoes it. And also segmented stuff looks kind of cool, kind of like a carapace. Also on, an, on animals you see that a lot. So it goes from uh, layer-wise, from the bottom layer, one on top, one on top of that, another on top of that, so it progressively gets uh, layered up more and more towards this central area. And here we have um, this fourth belt, and then it is counter, um, well, countered visually by these belts that go in another direction entirely, right? And we have uh, this interesting composition here where we don't just continue doing this horizontal thing forever, but we break it up with some uh, extremely different angles that now go in the direction of this, of the shoulder, right? So um, what we're doing here is um, creating some angles that are aggressive, but at the same time, you can see here that these uh, belts, and remember this used to be uh, like that this belt continues going to the shoulder, these belts, they are um, flush here. So they're integrated well, but they still create that interesting acute angle here. So then up here we have a basic triangle shape also with these belts, but also with these belts. So it's kind of a diamond shape if you continue thinking this, right? But here it's cut off, so we have uh, some flat surface here. And I can close it just like this. Right, also I had to remove some parts here, by the way. The belts used to extend up to here, but it's always uncomfortable in the armpit area. It's uh, usually more comfortable to keep it as clean as possible, so you don't get hung up on stuff. Right, so the flow of those is important. It's not just randomly bashing them together. Here's a neat detail. I didn't do this on purpose. I just didn't have a, a belt that was long enough or belt segment. Or I did have one that I wanted to use here. <laughs> in spite of, uh, of it being, uh, well, segmented like this, and we don't have that on the other side, it adds a bit of a life, a bit of story, because it's all uh, pretty perfect, if you will. Like, this is symmetric, this is symmetric, all of it is symmetric, and except on top here, where on this side we have this one belt, it underlaps this other belt, which here is segmented, so this uh, adds just a little bit of an unusual detail. So the whole structure of this, the visual structure, uh, it's mostly symmetric and balanced and structured and all that, but small asymmetric accents like this really add some visual interest. All right, now let's put back on that uh, jacket poncho thing. By the way, I'm going for a, kind of a version two of one of my very first costumes here, uh, where I also had a parka uh, cut up like this was even the same model of the parka. <laughs> Give me a second here. Ah, it's all still a bit all over the place. But uh, yeah, putting this on is also very easy. As you see, just gotta find the head hole and it will become a lot easier to do so once I fasten everything in place properly. Right. 
So you might have noticed this. In order to prevent it from being weird like here, you see it makes like whoop. This is kind of strange because this just lies on this rigid part right here. I've added these to just fixate this parka poncho hooded thing in place now. Now I will uh, probably make another episode just talking about the design decisions involved in this, otherwise this one will get kind of long. But yeah, by fixating it like this, uh, it creates this interesting cross here. And also it just doesn't shift around anymore. And this weirdness here is, well, it's not entirely gone, but a lot of it is gone. And it just stays in place where it should as I move. Right? And this still allows me to have a complete freedom of movement. I used to have it like on my uh, old work. Um, I used to have it like this. The one I had back then, you know, when nuclear snail started. Uh, where the sleeve would still be here. I tried this here, but I found out that just opening up the sleeve here uh, first looks kind of cooler. And second, uh, also it just allows me so much more freedom of movement. Yeah, the hood is great. Uh, basically, um, I have all the advantages of the, or the most advantages of this parka jacket while still revealing a lot of, uh, you know, the armor thing underneath and all that. And uh, yeah, of course, this will be distressed so that I have multiple layers here. This artificial fur, it will get nice and torn and all that. And above that will be this top fabric also nice and torn and dirty and yeah you might have noticed this stripe right here this is from a, a space foil uh, that uh, you also have in the car so I ordered some of those uh, to craft from them and I will uh, kind of try and go for a look where it's like I've scavenged pieces from a space station or something like that so give it a bit more of a you know that kind of a note because I like space stuff. Yeah, um, what else can we say about this? Well, this is what it looks like from the back right now. Basically just a cape slash poncho kind of thing. And there is still a lot of work left to do on this. Uh, it's, it's just a work in progress, you know. Um, I just wanted to share it with you for now. I am working on this for myself by the way, uh, this is one of those uh, rare uh, occasions where I'm not doing a commission right now, at least not this one. Uh, that said, I do offer custom commissions, as some of you have seen me post on my uh, Facebook and Instagram. So if you do want a custom commission uh, done by Nuclear Snail, which is me, uh, then you can write to me on Facebook or on Instagram. Please not here and not in the comments. I will never see that in time properly. So just write me a uh, Facebook or Instagram uh, message and we can talk about your custom commission. Other than that, I will see you in the next episode. I know there is much more to talk about here, but I will just keep you posted uh, as this build progresses. And I think this one is going to be really interesting with a lot of cool stuff that I have planned to add to it. Um, and yeah, until then, hail the snail. And uh, sorry about me being quiet for quite a while. I just had a lot of stuff going on. But um, yeah, here we go. That's, that's it for this episode. Man, I'm getting super rambly. See you then.